Manitoba Music. Uh, this is part of our Decipher series, which is um, a hip hop professional development workshop. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to be heard. Um, so we're joined by three wonderful uh, industry professionals who are going to share um, some advice and expertise with us. Um, so first, I would like you to all introduce yourselves. Um, and if you could just uh, tell us uh, your name, if you're working for a company, what company you work for, um, and then just a little bit about uh, your journey uh, to getting to where you are now in your music career. Um, so Dalton, can we start with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and thanks thanks for having me out, um, Manitoba Music and Winnipeg. For, it's, it's interesting, there's a rapper uh, a musician in Toronto uh, where I am based and live and was born, um, Odario and uh, Mood Ruff. He used to be in this group called Mood Ruff way back in the days. He's hosting a show on CBC Radio, shout out Odario. And, um, but he started a hip hop festival called uh, Peg City Holla way back in the days, right? I don't know. Yeah, you know? Yeah, Pig City Holla. So um, anyways, I digress. Uh, this is my Winnipeg hip hop history. You know, That's all I know. Um, yeah, so my name is Dalton Higgins, and um, so I'm a publicist and a PR strategist. And uh, so what that means in a, you know, the two-minute version is we represent the interests of uh, uh, musicians. Um, our area of expertise is uh, what we dub in Canada, you know, like urban, so-called urban music. Um, so uh, urban music, that's sort of an umbrella term. Uh, it's a euphemism for black music, um, but what it comes to entail now, we're talking about hip hop, you know, rap music, uh, certainly electronic music, R&B, soul. It could be Afro beats. It could be um, what, they, what people, what the colonizers called so-called world music, so Afro beats, um, Latin American music. That's what falls underneath that umbrella, all right? Rap, R&B, electronic. Um, I like to consider, yeah, the cool shit, you know, the cool shit that diverse communities, um, youth communities are, are messing with, you know. And uh, how, I, how I came to, you know, to, to, do, to do this, my, my journey is one, um, I'm a former journalist, so I was uh, uh, in Winnipeg, yeah, you have something called, what's the weekly newspaper here called? I should know this. Uh, you have a weekly out here, like a free weekly newspaper. What's it called? Yeah, Metro. Um, so I worked for uh, a magazine in Toronto called Now Magazine. Uh, now Magazine is uh, Canada's largest weekly news magazine. Most major cities, me major, most major metropolises, cosmopolitan cities have like some sort of weekly newspaper that you pick up free and it has, uh, you know, entertainment news listings on, you know, different things. So there and so I was a journalist for a number of years and I'd also uh, written for a lot of, you know, we talk about like, you know, urban music, hip hop. I'd written for a lot of really large rap magazines in the United States, right? So there was a magazine that people used to, it's called the Source Magazine. Um, it used to be considered like the Bible of hip hop culture, um, perhaps before some of your time, but you know, you probably hear stories about you know, the Source Magazine and then Vibe Magazine. So these are kind of like the preeminent, uh, you know, like, um, you know, rap uh, publications, you know, uh, of that time. So, so that's what I am. I'm a you know, formerly trained journalist. Uh, so I cranked out so much copy, you know, like writers. You're just writing, covering everything. I'd interviewed, like, I don't know, every Jay-Z. Like, you know, a lot of rap. Like, I've interviewed everybody. Because journalists, you really get out there. You know, it's like there's a concert. Uh, you know, Kanye West is in town. Backstage, the green room, you'll see a couple, like, geeked out journalists wanting to get some mass Kanye about his album. So journalists, they kind of, they've interviewed, talked to everybody, quite literally. You know what I mean? I have all these crazy stories which I can share later. Um, and then... Uh, as I was just sharing with uh, my brother here, Jesus, um, we, you know, publicists uh, like myself, I, I've been on, what do you call it, like 360? I've seen both sides of the coin, you know, because I used to be the recipient of musicians pitching me stories. Like, so I'm like, Joe Rapper from Winnipeg, um, I want to get on your blog, you know, you're the producer of The Fader, you know, noisy, complex, whatever. I used to be on the receiving end of all of those pitches from, from, from musicians. Uh, I feel that helps me now um, as I'm pitching my clients because I kind of know what producers are looking for, editors, you know, the blog editors, you know, you guys read. Whatever. I'm not sure what blogs you all are, Pigeons and Planes, uh, but I I'm in their head already because I, I used to be the person receiving those pitches from artists. Could you review my album, my mixtape, my single? Can you do a feature story on me, right? So that's my story, two-minute version. That's awesome. Janelle? Uh, I'm Janelle. Uh, just want to make sure I'm talking to the mic. Uh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm Janelle uh, from Toronto. Um, I started out, uh, well, I started out in the marketing world, so uh, ad agencies, all that stuff, um, and then I branched out on my own. 
Uh, so I work for my own company, uh, two companies, Rebel Whaler Inc. and Switch 85. So Rebel Whaler Inc. is more marketing. Uh, Switch 85 is more music and entertainment. So uh, I do uh, music consulting. So whether it's, uh, whether it's helping an artist with their brand, uh, working on endorsement deals, sponsorships, um, whether it's booking shows, um, uh, whether it's helping with their like actual marketing campaigns, uh, I pretty much can do it all. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I started out in the marketing world and then I ended up in the music world um, and I've done a lot of different types of endorsement deals, whether it's with gyms, like major gym chains in Canada to um, Yamaha in the States to um, you know, producers doing stuff with like Fruity Loops and like, uh, you know, it, it just, it just runs the gamut stuff with, uh, yeah. So I've, I've basically worked with a lot of different brands and I have that history of working with brands on the marketing side. Cause I used to do campaigns for any, everything from Nike, Reebok, a, any major bank, any major auto dealership. So a lot of those skills just became transferable. Uh, and I just wanted to work in the entertainment side. So that's where I am. Awesome. It's it's more fun on this side, right? Uh, yes, it yeah. is more fun and less <laughs> less red tape. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sweet. All right, Dreezus. Um my name is Dreezus, aka Jeremiah Manitopius. I'm originally from Saskatoon. Um, we're actually in my people's homelands right now, so it's still home. I've I lived in Winnipeg for about uh, seven years of my life too, so it's always nice to come back. Um, I'm a hip hop artist. Um, I'm still very much trying to break through, so I'm very, very, uh, feel very lucky to be sitting beside these two people, first of all, because, uh, you know, they, they got the, they got the plug. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking, but, um, yeah, um, I really started making, I, I think I'm gonna tell you this story. I started making hip-hop music, started getting into hip-hop music because I felt inferior in the outside world, in the everyday world, and um, I didn't know why, but the hip hop was the hip hop culture, the hip hop music was so free in their speech and movement and and everything about it, and I wanted to be that. I wanted to be that free, you know, with with myself. And uh, I feel like a lot of uh, people where I come from have a hard time expressing themselves. So hip hop became that expression, and uh, I became very close with hip hop by alienating myself from the world and hiding out in my room and stealing my uh my cookums ghetto blaster <laughs> so i used to take a little not against anybody christians or any, anything here but you know i used to take a gospel tapes and dub over them <laughs> with some like sunday sunday uh radio raps and make my little mixtapes you know and uh my dad used to listen to country i used to take those two and <laughs> erase it but yeah um most recently, like, it's been a long journey, and I could be up here for a long time telling my story, but most recently I started working with Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas, and we have a group called Mag7. Uh, we have an album that we finished in L.A. over the past two years, and uh, we have a documentary coming out that's going to spearhead that album. But um, on the other side of that, I'm also a solo artist, so I'm doing my own thing, and uh, I'm learning every day as we go. Awesome. I know you still, you're still on a journey, and that's actually a really great thing for other artists to hear, because I think a lot of people look up to you, and they're, they can't wait to be where you are, um, but it's always interesting to hear, like, I have a long way to go, because it's just such a long path, and yeah, it's there's so many things. It's a, for me, it's a journey itself, as opposed to just a paycheck. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's uncovering things as I go, and as I journey into these new lands, it's uncovering pieces of myself. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so just to get an idea of um, who's all in the room, um, who out there is uh, like a rapper? Okay. And anyone else, that there's, there's a, if you're an artist that isn't doing rap, but um, other sort of music, yeah. Okay. So multiple things. Okay. Pr uh, producers, sweet. And anybody who is working on the industry side, like management or... Yeah, okay, festival programming. Okay, cool. So lots of hats being worn out there. Um, all right, so we're going to get right into it. And I think um, if you have a question, um, 
usually I wait till the end, but I think we're a small enough group here that um, if there's something you really want to ask, just shoot your hand up. You might have to like rudely wave at me, but I won't think it's rude. Um, but sometimes I get in the zone and I'm not paying attention. So um, I won't be upset if you wave your arms at me. So if you have a question, um, put your hand up um, and then we'll make sure the mic gets to you so you can ask your question. Um, so uh, everybody starts from somewhere. Um, and often people aren't really sure exactly where to begin. Um, but what do you think, like, before you even start out, before you um, want to present yourself to the world or put yourself on a stage or really push uh, for that attention as an artist, what is the most important thing for an artist to have ready before they even, you know, go out there and, and start pressing? Right. Um I'll take that one. I think, okay, the art, okay, the, I'd say, to fo now this sounds very sort of simple and obvious, um, but focusing on the art itself, um, um, I'm going to give you, yeah, I guess a couple anecdotes. Basically, you can have uh, great marketing, you can, ha yeah, you can have uh, great, yeah, exactly, sorry. you can have like fantastic marketing <laughs> machine behind you, uh, great collaborations or connections, you know, Black Eyed Peas, like um, PR, publicity. You know, you're on the cover of Metro newspaper, uh, Win Winnip Winnipeg Free Press. I know that because I've done stuff with them. And so you can have all of that. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes back down to the music. So um, a lot of, you know, a lot of acts like, yeah, you can have a machine, a major label sign you and all that. I think what the real pros look for is like high artistic integrity, you know. Sometimes what that means is when I used to write, I spent a lot of time just kind of, uh, you know, uh, we say like our manuscripts, right? Because I've written books as well. Like I've written six books, you know. I, I wrote a book about Drake, you know, just so you guys, any Drake, anybody in here in Drake? Uh, but, but Drake, yeah, exactly. See, exactly. I know some of you are in denial, you know what I mean? You're a Drake fan, you know what I mean? Like you're all Drake fans, though. just in denial. But um, so you're working so hard on manuscripts. So with, with, with the musicians, like Jesus is like, um, before it comes to market or before you put it out, you're just in the studio, in the lab, you know what I mean? Like before you, you get to the mixing, mastering. Um, but I'm one of those, I'm a sort of a devout, like a strong proponent of like the actual art, the beats. I, a couple guys here said, I think producers, I saw a couple hands go up. And um, I'm like, when I'm listening to stuff as a seasoned veteran, it's just like, are, you know, like how much work was really put into making this beat? Now, I know you can make beats now and just like crank them out, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm just saying like, yeah, so our high artistic integrity. So the people that ultimately make it like... Kanye West, he's in the news now. I think there's some things, you know, mental health issues happening there. But his early music, you know, because I'd, inter I'd interviewed him, you know, before, like in Chicago, before he was a thing. And so one thing, his production was always ridiculous. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so when nobody cared, like, you know what I mean? His backpack, he's just like running around in Chicago. Like, nobody knows who this guy is. And he's real thirsty. But um, my one memory, you know, it's just like the beats are banging. You know what I mean? Like, and to this day, like, yeah, it's just the music. He put so much, you know, before Rock Nation, before having stylists and Kim Kardashian and all this stuff, is that his music, anybody that, you know, is familiar with his early catalogs, like, his, his beats were, be like, you could play it right now in Manitoba Music Office and you'd be like, what, what is that? So can you rewind that? Like, whose track is that? You know, so you want to uh, elicit that kind of response from people with your music. Yeah. So focus on the art. The rest is going to come together. Don't worry about that. Let us handle that. Focus on your art. Um, so, like, for me, like one of the important things that an artist should always be thinking about when they're s starting out is, um, yes, the art is definitely a big part of that, but part of that art is finding um, the right people to work with, right? The right producers that are going to push you, right? And make sure that you're um, really um, taking your music to the level it needs to be. You know, making sure that you, uh, you know, get, make sure the mixes are, are really good. It's mastered properly. So, like, part of that whole journey is collaborating with people to find those people that you trust and you have that relationship with in the studio. doesn't mean that you've been working with them forever. It just means that once you're in the room with them, you already know that that is the person that you want to collaborate with, or these are the producers that I want to collaborate with. Um, so that's an important part as well. But the other thing too is like, you know, not necessarily what is your message, meaning like what's the message in your music, but what's the message that you want to put out there in the world about yourself? What is your vision for yourself? What's what's the brand you're putting out there? Because at the end of the day, it's it's hard for an artist to think of themselves as a brand, but you also do have to wear those two hats and separate uh, separate yourself in that way. So this is what I'm putting out there in the world. If your brand is I'm going to be authentically me, 
then make sure that that is what people see, right? So like say if someone's looking at your social media feed and all they have is your social media feed or all they have is the music that's on, on your page, right? If they, if they listen to the music on Spotify and then they go to uh, where they can find you, whether it's your website, Facebook, what have you, is what, you put, is what you're putting out there actually what you want to say, right? Because that's the most important thing. Are there certain things that you know you don't want people to know about yourself, right? Because it's private and you're allowed to have that right. You don't have to put your whole life out there. But part of it is the music and part of it is what is the message you want to put out there? Uh, because one of the things that makes it really, um, a really big impression is if someone can listen to your music and then look at the messages that you put out there, whether it's interviews, whether it's online and any type of platform, social media, um, is do they understand what the brand is? If they, if they just look at the, everything that you put out there, can they understand who you are? Can they connect with you through that? Because it's a, it's, the music is worldwide. It's no longer, you're in Canada, so you know, it's only Canadians that are, that are listening to you. It's a streaming world. It's a social media world. So now the whole world can look at you and understand exactly who you are. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you know who you are like fully, because no one does. It's a journey in life. But based on where you are right now, is this the best reputation, representation of you? And that includes your music. Um, and the other thing too is don't compromise your quality. So if you know that, you know, this, you really love this song, but it's not quite there yet, but you also want to put something out, being patient is really important as well. Making sure the quality is there because at the end of the day, it's your name and it's your face attached to it, right? Um, so you have to feel like you put your all into it and you don't regret what you've put out there in the world. That's definitely an important part too. Could I add, I'm going to add just one quick piece. No, because it just gets a brainwave. That piece there, find your lane. It just reminds me of conversations I have every day. Um, you, okay, what is it? Here's the question we ask uh, potential clients and journalists. We, what is it that different, differ, differentiates your art from the 6,200 rappers that exist in Manitoba, right? What is your lane? What is it that I'm hearing that's any different here that I can't otherwise hear amongst the hundreds of rappers in your, in, in your neighborhood, in Manitoba, in the province, in Winnipeg, the city, right? That's huge, that lane, what's your lane? All of our favorite rappers, R&B singers, they have, there's some, there's, they have this kind of niche, this thing. They have this thing that we can't quite you know, properly define, but it's something that when I think Kanye, I think this. When I think whomever, I think this, you know? Yeah, so that lane, what's your lane? What are you giving me that others aren't? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, as a producer and as a, as a rapper, musician, whatever, yeah, sorry. And just to jump in quickly, because he would have the best, uh, the best take on it. Um, uh, but the other thing too is uh, also don't overthink what you're doing because when I'm saying what message you want to put out there and all that stuff, I'm not saying it to make you kind of close yourself off from um, what your vision is for yourself because a lane doesn't necessarily mean a sound, right? Because if you have an over an underlining message in everything you do, no matter what music you put out it's already following that, right? So you don't have to feel stuck in a sound lane, right? The lane is more about who you are and being able to put that out there and that's your lane. So no matter what, if you change, uh, if you, you change your sound completely, right? The message is still gonna be the same because it's you, right? So the lane is just more about what you wanna put out there in the world, right? And it could be that you wanna have a specific sound or it could be you just wanna have a specific message that you're putting out there in everything you do. But that I just wanted to just make sure I clarify that. Don't overthink the process, because as soon as you overthink it, you've already lost your vision. And losing your vision is like, you know, it's just not something that you want to do. I think I'm already overthinking. I think um, after this, I'm going to go erase all my happy dad pics off my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, for me, it's like what comes to mind is this this term that used to throw around in hip hop back in the 90s is keep it real. Like it was so cliche, it's still cliche to me and when I hear it, it's kind of corny but um, when you really break it down, um, it's one of the best tools we can have as, as artists is keeping it 100 and true to yourself. You know, um, not trying to please anybody out there. Um, also energy, energy is very important to me and maintaining my own energy and not letting any other energies mess with that. And that's kind of keeping myself in 
in sometimes close paces, places, you know, and it's being very mindful of who I let into the studio, who I let on the road with me, because I've taken guys on tour who, man, starting fights every, 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 every venue, you know, like I, I've been there and done that, you know, and um, also one thing for me is um, attitude, kindness, you know, it goes so far to give everybody uh, a certain amount of respect that you come across no matter where you're at you know and in this journey because you never know when that person might turn around and get you a deal or might get you um plugged in here or they might just ha you know add to a, a, a productive day or add, add to your happiness that day you know what i mean and um it's very important to um protect your energy you know and uh, also find the sources of that energy and uh, the 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 roots, you know, that's where I'm at, you know. Trying to conserve batteries, so I have to keep remi remembering to turn this back on. Um, I wanted to ask you, Jesus. Um, uh, Janelle was t talking about like you know finding the people to help you with the production, with the mastering, with the um, mixing. Uh, so for someone who has sort of, I mean, y your career has sort of blossomed out of the prairies or kind of we're in the middle of nowhere. And I know that um, often can be really difficult for artists around here to feel like there are those resources and there are those people close by. Um, how did you go about finding those people to work with? I walked through these doors right here. <laughs> Literally. Um, I used to come to these, <coughs> these talks back in the day. And... Um, you know, I was going through my own personal struggles back then and with, uh, I don't know, some of you guys might know me from before, but I was in the street and I was, you know, I was dealing with a lot of alcoholism and selling drugs and that little bit of, um, little bit of a dream that I had for hip hop music, that little, that little buddy that I'd be like, yo, you got something in there, would push me through these doors. But then I also had a guy named Alan Gray Eyes who um, a lot of you are probably familiar with who kind of nudged me along the way and was like, you know, get out there. You know, don't be afraid to, to, to put yourself out there and um, really show people who you are. Really, it was just about making those connections and just coming into the door and just making yourself put available to... Sometimes it's, it, that's all, it, you know, that's the, f that's the first step and sometimes one of the biggest steps is just getting out there and, and um, facing people, you know, being face to face, having these conversations, opening your mind up because everybody else has something else to say that might add to your, your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the branding part because, um, you know, it, it seems like nowadays it's, it's not enough to ha just have good music. And you have said, um, you know, like that needs to be paired with, you know, a lane or um, there's got to be something else that you you represent. Um, that can be a little bit difficult for people to find um, or to fully realize. Do you have do you have any tips for how someone can find that brand and how they can pick a lane? <laughs> I mean, the lane thing is, you know, back to the keep it real. Yeah, it's, it's funny because we're all essentially saying the same thing, but articulated in different ways. Keep it real from the 90s. And you were talking about this. It's not product. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like every one of you. This is how like educators, you know, when, when you're in a classroom, I mean, good educators, progressive educators, they look at all 29 students in the classroom as like you all are unique individuals. Like you're from the Ukraine. You're indigenous. You're from Jamaica. You're uh, from Costa Rica. You're for, okay, bro, was it, did I say Jamaican? And, yeah, exactly, see, that's right. That's my background, too. Whenever, whenever Jamaicans are in the room, you know what I mean? It's like, this. we have to say, we have to go, bro, bro, you know, like, <laughs> dance hall. But, um, yeah, so you're, right, you're from China, Korea, like, you all, everybody in here has some kind of unique point of view and frame of reference that is radically different from that of myself, Janelle, and Jesus. And that's what, that, and this is what we're saying. We talk about keep it real. We were in the car driving here talking about like hockey and shit. Like, you know, Winnipeg Jets, how like there's a lot of traffic. And it's just like part of like me, I can tell, you know, parts of my story, I know there, it's some weirdo shit. Like I played hockey and this is back in the days, you know, like, uh, you know, Jamaican household, you know what I mean? I don't even know how, how I ended up playing. It's weird. It's really weird. But I played hockey at a high level for many years and 
And it's kind of like a thing where there's all these things that I did that I know, you know what I'm trying to say? It's just weird. Jamaican guy. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the Jamaican bobsled team or something. You know what I mean? It was just some weirdo shit. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> like everybody else is doing, you know, playing basketball, baseball. I'm just like, I'm on, on a hockey rink, right? So, but just anyways, there's all these, like, so every one of you has a tale or story like that is what I'm trying to say, right? Like, there's somebody in the room here just going to be like, yeah, you know, my mother was a Holocaust survivor. And then, like, her, she met some guy and they, they you know, he was from Winnipeg. Like, you all have some interesting narrative and journey and frame of reference and point of view and when that comes out in your art it's game over that's what i'm talking about lane is we all have like you know d trials tribulations um challenges beautiful things shitty things and when you're able to articulate that in your art holy cow you know like that that's keeping it real that's the lane you know that you're not you're not fabricating a lane or manufacturing a lane it's like i want to be a trap a trap guy from winnipeg but like yeah you all just think about that wherever i don't know where all you all are coming from i see you know sorry gender um you know uh, culture region geography sexuality i don't know but i know you all have something that you could share with us right now and be like yeah you know actually you know i have this interesting story about how i grew up like, and when that shit, you know what i mean like that's mm -hmm. that and those, a lot of the best artists that i appreciate the most as a fan it's like yeah they're just telling these interesting stories you know what i mean like yeah that, that's what it is storytelling yeah i, th I think um the our struggles like uh tell a story about ourselves you know and um we all have our own story, our own struggles, and I think, um, like what he said, was articulating that and putting that out and expressing that is is important to finding your lane. You know, um, for f some of like for, for for myself, my lane was kind of running concurrent beside me for my whole life. You know, I didn't really um, identify with some of the some of the things that indigenous people go through on a day to day because I was so trapped in a different world. But once I opened my my mind and my my eyes to myself and who I am, all those stories of when I was a when I was a kid, when when I was going through struggles, when when I was having happy times, all all of them started to like make these dots, you know, and it was a when when I tell a story, it's connecting those dots. You know what I mean, and um, you'll never you'll never know it sometimes um, how awesome your stories can be once you actually put them out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so in regards to that too, I mean, um, I do find that you know audience engagement. A lot of it is like they they kind of want have a relationship with the artist. And by sharing your struggles and putting yourself out there in that way, you're making yourself pretty vulnerable to your fans. But people, that's kind of what people are clinging on to these days. Um, but has that been difficult for you? Is there ever a time when you're like, I shouldn't be sharing this? Or, or is that just something you've kind of had to let go and be like, this is important and people need to relate with me? Yeah, I, I used to try and hold on to things and um, like uh, not share because I thought, I was scared of what people might think of me, but at the end of the day, um, this is what made me, you know, what everything I've been through, everything that I go through, the people that I meet, the people that are around me, that, 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 that tells my story. So for me, here we go back to keep it real. I, I can't believe I brought this phrase back today, <laughs> but it, 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 it comes to my head once in a while when people say, keep it 100, I'm going to keep it 100 with you, you know, or 100. It's like saying, keep it real. And um, for me, personally, I feel way less um, pressure. I feel so much lighter when I'm just being 100 with everybody, especially with my art. That's a place where I can shape and form the way I tell people, even the way they might perceive it or might take it in, you know? And it's, it's, it's for me, I don't really leave too much hidden at all, you know, and that that makes for um, a lot less stress. And also, it's almost like a reminder of what I've been through and also a reminder that I'm on the right track. And it's okay to be open because there's somebody down the street who's going through that plus this and that and that. But if they hear that, you might just open up their heart, their mind. You, you might open up their life. You know what I mean? So I don't hold on back, back on it. That's the beauty of rap music, right? Yeah. Rap is like, 
it, it, the reason it's such a this brilliant music form, it, it, it puts a mirror to reality. Keep it 100. So rappers, when I talk to, we just had this great conversation because this is the first time I'm meeting Driss and, and Janelle. And it's just like, it's so real. You know what I mean? Like rappers, we're, gonna, we're not going to, like people that come from the rap uh, tradition, they're not going to, they're going to be like, yeah, man, j- just lost my job last night. I have a two-year-old daughter. Um, I'm probably going to need some help. That's how people that work out of the rap tradition communicate. We keep it 100, whereas perhaps, I'm not saying people attached to other music genres don't do the same, because we know the blues tradition, right? It comes out of that country, country and western, definitely, right? It's storytelling, it's raw, it's unsanitized, it's unfiltered. But um, that's what I love about rap, is that rappers, because we were just sharing some intimate, th- you know what I mean? I just met Drees and we're saying, yeah, man, we're just going back and forth. I'm just like, that, that's, that's where we're, we're hip hop dudes, man, like in hip hop and women, you know what I mean? Like, that's what happened there, you right? Not hold it back, it's just, yeah. Absolutely. Do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, so about like the whole brand, branding side. Um, <clears throat> like definitely, like you know, not everyone necessarily wants to share everything about them. But just consider, like, when it comes to thinking about your brand and what you put put out there, you have to think of everything that you put out there as an extension of your art. So if your brand and uh, if your brand is representing a certain style, right? So whether it's uh, not just the music side, but say there's a certain, certain aesthetic that you want for how you put things out. Then if you know what you want to put out in terms of an aesthetic, don't compromise on that aesthetic, right? So like, you know, like there's various different ways that you can brand yourself as an artist aside from the sound part. But when it comes to the image and the look, um, it's more about what is the extension of you or your art that you want to put out there that you know is... Uh, something that you're not going to compromise on. So, you know, whether it's, you know, I don't necessarily want anything too flashy or what have you or um, super um, edited or anything like that. I want it just to be raw and grainy and gritty and have that feel and people can see that, then have that be part of it, right? So I'm not, necessar- not necessarily saying that everyone knows exactly what they want, like look-wise, aesthetic-wise. But if you are one of those people that have a certain vision in your head, for the visual extension of your art, then make sure that you find a way not to compromise on that. So whether it's like, um, you know, meeting up with students, you know, from one of the programs here, maybe it's graphic design, maybe it's, you know, there's all these different ways you can meet with people to build a team around you um, to help support the vision. That's another thing too. No man is an island. You see all these artists and you know, they're super successful and all that stuff. And you may not necessarily know that there's a team behind them, but there is a team behind them. Um, so just keep that in mind that collaboration isn't just about the music side, but it's also who can help put your vision out there and support you um, so that you can focus on the parts that you want to focus on, which is the music side of things. If you just say, okay, this is the vision that I want for uh, my aesthetic or my video or what have you find those people that understand you and want to grow and build with you rather than um, trying to do it all yourself if you feel like you're uh, feel like it's uh, taking away from the music that's another thing that, that I think is important with the brand as well just if you feel like you're feeling overwhelmed um, when it comes to certain aspects find your tribe of people that are gonna build and grow with you. Because those are the people that will be your day ones, they're your ride or dies, they don't care if there's any money in it yet, the goal is one day there's gonna be. Um, and it's, it's better at the top with your team around you than to be at the top by yourself. Can I, can I ask a question for, for the people out there? Yeah. How would you do that? Uh, well, like, there's, there's various ways, like coming to events like this and meeting a bunch of people is one way as well. Like the other thing too is like we're in a social media world, right? So I know a ton of people get DMs all the time and whatever, right? But like, you know, if there's like, say for instance, if you know that there's a certain school that has a graphic design program, reach out to the professors and say, hey, I'm a local artist. Uh, I'm trying to um, help, I'm trying to build a team around me. I'm really looking for someone that potentially might have an aesthetic that um, is the right fit for me. Um, I, and I'd like to be able to p- possibly meet with some of the students and see if there's possibly a fit for someone to be part of my team. Like, there, like, there's no, there, there's no point in not at least trying to find a way to build a team. 
um, around you. So mm-hmm. there's schools, there's you know going through your network of people that you know because there might be someone that you know who knows someone who is actually the right fit for you but that you've never met but just through six degrees of separation. So it, it's it's a process just like it's a process with the music. It's also a process with finding those people that you feel are going to support you and be there for you and help push your vision through as well. So yeah, so there's just there's various ways to go about it. DMs, school programs, there's just, you know, going through your network of connections that you know already. No doubt. Hmm. I have a uh, sorry, I have a f- uh, very successful friend who his mother is his accountant. You know what I mean? And he's killing it. Like hmm. just just for just for example, you know what I mean? Like sometimes there's a people sitting right next to you. And uh, I want to add one piece being there's a term we use you you have to be in the mix, all right? In the mix. And what that means is um Musicians have been talking about that forever. Um, if you're, you know, we go back to Miles Davis, you know, it's just like he would, he talked about a gr- one of the greatest books, pieces of literature, his autobiography, Miles. Uh, this idea of mus- musicians, you know, doing this li- kind of like a, a renaissance moment, you know, going to New York, hang out there for a bit, L.A., Atlanta. That's a real thing, being in the mix. Um, and this is what, so if, if, I, if I were to think of uh, most of my, a, you know, A-list clients is that, they, they take that very important. So it's kind of like if they say, hey, you know, there's a thing happening with OVO or there's a thing happening with some collective in Toronto or Montreal or Winnipeg is that they're, they, they uh, you know, it's like out of sight, out of mind. They're, they're, they're just right there. You know, that whole six degree separation you just mentioned, it's like, yeah, they're right. Just being in the mix, you know, like if there's a group of musicians, producers, creatives that you, you appreciate their work, there's, you know, adoration, um, try to you know, find yourself, you know, at their gigs, if they're throwing, you know what I mean? Like record release parties, like whatever you're doing. But yeah, being in the mix is hugely important. Um, in, t- t- in Toronto too, because there's there's a bit of a renaissance happening, a lot of, you know, big projects happening there. Um, if you, any of you ever get out to Toronto, it being kind of, it's a little bit of the epicenter of, I would say Toronto, of Canadian hip hop, if we're to be perfectly honest. Um, if you're ever in that region or around, I think it's good, you know, come out, you know, network. Uh, you could hit up people like us, like feel free. And just I'll invite you to a party or something. You know what I mean, like it, yeah. no, no. And then you just you know network, shake hands, and before you know you have a placement on like somebody's record. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so, being in the mix is hugely important. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add on that. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, speaking of Toronto, um, I I got booked for a show a few years ago for like five hundred bucks, and I was like, you know, kind of bummed out because it's only five hundred bucks. But um, I made the trip out, and I I booked. I made it so that I stayed for a couple extra days, and I knew one guy, Gavin, from Remix, um, from some online um, back and forth, and I hit him up, and I said, do you know any producers in the area? Do you know any other MCs, that, indigenous MCs in the area? And he, he literally just brought me along with him to different events in Toronto, and I started to meet some of the sickest producers I have ever met, and I worked with two, to, the, to, to this day, like I was telling uh, Dalton about this guy named Pops that I met. Um, so basically, Gav linked me up with this guy named Addy Papa. Papa, he was Rich Kids manager, and he brought me to this place called the Rehearsal Factory in Toronto in Mississauga, and it was basically just a big rehearsal factory, but a bunch of like studio rooms like lined up, and he just brought me there, sat me in a room. Said I wanted to work to these other producers in this in the spot, and all of a sudden, like six of them came into the room, and I'm sitting there, we're, we're going back and forth, and four of those guys I work with to this day, you know, Rich Kid, Pops, Pops recently did um, J Rock featuring J Cole, um, Out of Sight, Out of Mind, um, Rich Kid, I I got a man through Rich Kid, I got a Frank Dukes beat, whoo, you know what I mean? So like, just stepping out there and kind of being sometimes you're that kind of weird guy just hanging around all the time but that weird guy can possibly turn into you know drake or whatever have you you know whoever whoever you look up to but um i also did that in new york city you know that was a lot scarier than toronto i'll tell you that much but um i got booked out on the show with taboo in 2017 and I asked Taboo's management, it was kind of, I wouldn't suggest doing this. If they can extend my stay a little bit. And they're like, cool, you want to stay out there? All right, we got you. So I jumped on, on, the, uh, on the subway. And 
I just hit up like very small acquaintances that I had and ended up in Brooklyn. And uh, I had a friend named Ernie Panacoli. He's a Cree guy who grew up in Brooklyn. And uh, he, he took photos for uh, Word Up magazine back in the day. And uh, he photographed Biggie, Tupac, even JFK. It's crazy, craziness. Anyways, I'm like, I know him. I'm going to give him a call. So he's like, yo, Drees, come on. Scooped me up, took me through Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Took me to to the Biggie spots, of course. You know, I went, you know, I'm not going to get into all what, what I did and all that. But, you know, I paid homage to Biggie at his spot. But also, we hit this gallery called Bishop on Bedford. And when he walked in there, walked me in there, everybody's like, oh, Ernie, because it was a Biggie celebration. It was like the celebration of his, I mean, a memorial. And um, they're like, Ernie, would you get on the mic and say something? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, of course. So he gets on the mic, and the first thing he says to me, he goes, everybody, I would like to welcome you, I mean, introduce you to the Canadian Biggie. And I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man. What I'm, I'm like kind of shriveling there. I'm like, but that's how much like um, confidence he had in me. And um, it ended up being like an awesome moment because I connected with the Bishop on Bedford people, ended up recording there, which led me to a studio session that night that I never thought it would happen in Diamond District Studios, which is in Times Square. And it was a crazy story about getting there. I had a 4 a.m. session. This is really stepping out. I had a 4 a.m. session only. He said, you can come, but at 4 a.m. And he gave me the address. It was Broadway something. So after Bishop on Bedward, Bedford, I jumped on the, uh, the subway, punched in the, the address on my Google. It took me, to, took me to East Brooklyn. And that's not where I was supposed to go. So like 3 in the morning, I'm in like Flatbush, Brooklyn. I jump out. I'm like, okay, this is not. No, there's no studio around here. It looked like the projects, man. I was scared, but hard pumping. I call up the guy. He's like, hey, man, which Broadway you at? It's Manhattan Broadway. I'm like, what? Took the train back. Cut one of the illest records I ever made. You know, it was in the house where Designer made Panda and where Jim Jones ran out on the daily dip set, you know, this and that. And that was from me just literally going off a whim walking around you know i was walking everywhere in new york i walked to brooklyn bridge i, I just i just want to take it all in and that was the love for hip-hop that i had you know so don't be afraid to just get out there you know i think that's really good advice and i i do feel that sometimes artists are afraid to reach out um especially to people like dalton and janelle you know who are here's some industry heavyweights and you have a lot of um, say and you know a lot of people and you have some you know power around um, so you know with that being said do you have any advice for artists who are feeling like a little scared to reach out to you um, but also you know if they do decide to reach out to you um, what is like what is the best approach um, maybe go through some of the do's and and do nots um, yeah from a from a PR mark I th Back to that Ernie, so <laughs> Ernie, that's my, <laughs> no, that's touching, I gotta share that, like, I brought Ernie here, I'm the guy that brought him to Canada, the first time in 2000, what? yeah, yeah, because he's, I met him in New Jersey, a uh, hip-hop political convention, heard him speak, I was like, who the hell's this guy, brought him up here 2009, 10, and he's been, he's like a mentor to everybody here, it's one of my greatest, proudest moments, like, ever, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's like the guy, Ernie Panicholi, we gotta big him up, he's a new book called Hip Hop Beyond the, no, I'll stop. But um, no, this guy's like a heavyweight. Anyways, um, yeah. So I think for one, reaching out. Okay, here's the thing. Because, you know, with the advent, you know, social media, you know, Janelle did a great job talking about, you know, social media, um, you know, world. Um, so you can, yeah, slide up in everybody's DMs and, and you know, come off real thirsty. Um, and, 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 you know, you just want to get your stuff out there. You know, we get that. Get outside of your comfort zone. That's cool. I think, uh, you know, this idea of like a first impression, you can, only, you can only make one first impression. So I think when you come to, uh, you know, whether it's somebody you want to handle your marketing, uh, potential management, potential booking agency, potential artist you want to collaborate with, um, just make that first impression, it really, it's telling, you know, like come with, you know, when I talk about artistic integrity, where it's just like you're coming with something that's kind of you feel is your, your best work or completed or near completion or is really is keeping it 100 or 
you know, that kind of thing. I think a lot of, uh, you know, we get, a, you know, ton of queries, artists, they want representation, like, you know, as far as PR, and it's just like, it just feels like a half-baked, half-assed um, uh, query, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't feel like, you know, and it, and it may not be, but it, it's how it reads, you know what I mean? Like, so... Um, that first impression, you know, so even sometimes you meet somebody, you know what I mean? And you're just really genuine. Like they're going to like uh, somebody like Ernie, you know what I mean? Like he's not, you know, he, he, we could consider him like a demigod. He's been with, you know, he shot every, he's taken, you know, the photography of everybody, literally, you know what I mean? You name an icon, he's, he shot them, Nas, Biggie. But uh, is, is he approachable as hell? Yes. Anybody in this room could hit up Ernie right now on Facebook and he's going to reply back in within 48 hours, you know what I mean? So it's just like. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Humility, humility, and uh, just, you know, like, yeah, I don't know if I'm saying it's a sloppy way of saying it, but like that first impression, you know what I mean? Just like humility, um, honesty, um, and also, you know, find attention to your, like your work, you know, the actual art. I don't, we don't, I don't care so much about, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's just the art. I, I got to tell you, it, it just comes, it's, it's crazy and simple. It sounds so simple and ridiculous, but like, like if you like you can like I could not know anything about any one of you in the room and I can like I was looking at some magazine covers there Stylus magazine and um those are some really nice covers. You see that cover there like the the, the Stylus magazine. I'm just like I don't know the magazine and I'm just like I'm I'm blown I'm blown away by some of it. You know what I mean? So it's it's the art. Like I don't know who published it, who the you know I don't know who the publisher is. Um, same thing. You're wearing these camo pants. You know what I mean? That you know, I'm just like those are dope. Like you know what I mean though, because I was just my looking at them. My mom like, made these, and I just told her today I want her to make me a pair in like yeah, black velvet. Things. So mom, if you're watching, see compliments all the time. Make me more. No, no, those pants are like crazy. Look, you know what I mean? Camo, like kind of like what is that? You know what I mean? So, so at the end of the day, it's not like yeah, I, I met you for the first time a couple like an hour. We've known each other for all of 90 minutes. And I, I'm just saying, it comes back down to you know, you could be wearing a you know what I mean, a great sweater. I'm just like, where'd you get that sweater? It just your your knee jerk and visceral response to something is it's it's the it's the art, it's the integrity, you know. It's not the uh, you know your connections or who you know or how much money you have. You're independently wealthy or homeless or I, I don't care about that. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah, I, I just want to see something that just hits me. You know, like raw. You know? Yeah. Um, so for me, um, like. Um, to me, like one of the things I won't necessarily give you like advice on how to hit me up. You just hit me up. Doesn't really matter how. Um, but uh, I would say when you're like, say, if you're a producer and you want to collaborate with other producers and try to, um, you know, make some more connections and all that, just to give some examples based on some people in the room. Um, you know, like a lot of people are hitting up people's DMs, right, and going after the like the big name people that they want to go after, but you also have to think about a strategy. So say if the person that you want to work with, your dream person, isn't hitting you back up or responding, whether it's through DM or you found some sort of contact, then, you know, one way could be, okay, so who are the people that this producer collaborates with a lot? Who are the people on this person's team? And then you're pretty much just going ham on research to find who these people are, whether it's on Instagram, whether... If you're if you're good with LinkedIn, then do LinkedIn. You know, like there's all these different ways to hit people up. But I will say is you just have to have a strategy about it, right? So you know, um, like for for instance, like at the end of the day, like not no one no one comes into the world with all the connections that they have now in their life. You had to find a way to make those connections. So like for me, I didn't come into um, this industry with a ton of connections. I came into it with no connections. Um, and my the thing that was my selling point was, even if I haven't met you face to face, my email game is on point, right? Because I, I made connections with booking agents from like really big booking agencies that like deal with like, you know, all the big artists from around the world. And, you know, the, I have a, like a story would be like, I sent an email a couple emails just trying to get this artist I was working with um, potentially with one of these booking agencies. Um, and the thing that ended up happening is I've never met these, I never met them in person, any of these agents. Um, but I did an event with somebody that knows somebody at one of the labels and it was like a showcase. And one of those agents was actually in the room. And this person didn't know that I hit this person up before. So they introduced, that person introduced me to this agent. And the first thing he said was, I remember your email. That email was six months ago when I met him. And considering that he remembers an email from six months ago means that you're on point, right? So you don't, so I would say the one thing is don't get intimidated by the process of reaching out to people 
because everyone at some point didn't have a connection and you have to remember that there's no such thing as coming into any career path or passion or anything having all the connections that you want because you're not born with the well some people are born connections but either way they still have to they still have to prove themselves regardless of if you have all those connections so um you know for producers i would say like find your way around to get to the people that you want to work with and when you're reaching out to like think about why you're reaching out to the person and what's the purpose don't just reach out to someone without knowing why you're reaching out to them are you reaching out to this person because uh potentially you want them to manage you and if that's the case then tell them something about you right tell them something about you more than just here's my music yes the music's important too um because for me like uh if i was to work with artists um, one of the things that I really like to do is have a connection with that artist. Like, I don't like working just with anyone um, because my whole thing is I'm doing this because I love to do it. So why would I want to work with people that I don't necessarily want to work with, right? And it doesn't matter what level you're on. It's what connection do we have, right? Um, so uh, my whole thing is think about who you're reaching out to. If it's a manager, then talk about, um, talk, talk, like, say what you're interested in. Talk about yourself. Talk about why you think that person is a good fit for you, right? If if you if this is someone that you really really have like researched and uh, and all that stuff, then show it. Cause like the other thing too is like some people really like flattery. I don't subscribe to it, but a lot of people want to at least feel like you have done the research and you appreciate what they've done. So even if it's like, okay, well, I'm hitting up this manager and I know this manager's work with these, 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 these people, but this is the latest news that came in about that person or some sort of interview that you read and you liked something that they said, you can bring that up too. So there's always ways. Um, and I know like, um, you know, for, for Jesus, he's been able to travel and all that stuff and not everyone gets to be able to travel all the time to make connections. So because it's an online world, you can find a way around that to make the connection. So whether it's um, whether it's like you know, say Canadian Music Week, uh, say Canadian Music Week happens, you don't get to go to Toronto, but online, you can see everyone that spoke, right? So if you wanted to like use that as a way to reach out to people, you could pretend you went, right, <laughs> and say I really, really um, appreciated what you said in this thing right honestly <laughs> you got to find a way to connect right they like how what proof do they need to have that you were there right so you can find a way through this online world to build a connection by pretending you were there right because of someone you want to connect with but you weren't able to make it they don't need to know that you didn't make it you could just say i really loved what you said on that panel and i really appreciate it Right or or say you really appreciate something on the panel, but you, but then you add something like a news clip from something that you heard that person say. Like there's all these different ways you can go about it. So I would just say there's always a way to make a connection, um, and just think about what you want um, and who you're approaching. Uh, that's definitely important because I've made connections. Like you can make connections with all like the biggest booking agents in the world, without even knowing someone at that agency, and all it takes is is uh, research. Right, I randomly like you can randomly end up getting connections with like Selena Gomez's people or what. Like, yeah. honestly, I I ended up having a conversation with Justin Bieber's booking agent one time, just because I was looking for a whole bunch of things. And the thing is, people don't expect you to reach out at the level you're reaching out. So if you're doing DMs that's not working, think just keep in mind DMs are flooded. So go back to the old ways. Right, find the name of the person that you want to talk to. Google the office number, call the office, leave a message for the person. <coughs> Honestly, like there's email, there's DMs, there's phone calls, like there's so much ways that you can go about doing it. So I, I would just say like, think outside the box and some, some of that means thinking back to when the box wasn't as open with the internet. So phone calls, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Who's calling up? booking agencies looking for like think about it, how much artists are going to call the booking agencies they might dm people are they calling there's your way in yeah and that's actually that yeah. that shows persistence as well right which you know like yeah. there's a there's a, a line between like being a 
I'll get your question in one sec. But like being annoying, but I or being persistent, but I do think that people on the industry side, they like to see an artist being persistent because that's also what separates somebody who wants it from someone who's just kind of and going through the motion. It comes back right. to the art, though. It's but not I, just I'm going to throw a wrench out there for you all. It comes back to the art. All those emails and DMs are being read. My assistant reads. They, oh, they are all getting read. And you know what it comes back down to? Yeah, it comes back down to the art. Yeah, they're being read. Sometimes the response back to the, you know, your queries, it may be slow. Right? Admittedly, you know, you send it. It's like, how come someone didn't reply back to me? It's like a week later. You're feeling a bit like, oh, okay, they ignored me. I got blown off. It comes back. It's all every DM and email, for the most part, as far as working professionals, it's, they're all being read. Every single, like I, in my phone, I, I, I show you in my phone. I read every single, but I come back to now, like the integrity behind it, the music, it comes right back down to that. So I can make a connection with Scooter Braun and Everybody, really. And you know what it comes back down to? We, I, I basically go like, this, mm, hit play, you know, like SoundCloud. Play. Like that, that's what it is. And then it's just like, okay, uh, whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's the only reason why I keep coming back to that is you can get contacts to anybody, right? In this day and age, there's no excuse. Like quite literally, you know, if you want to connect with anybody, Frank Dukes, like you can track down Frank Dukes. I'm just, maybe not Frank Dukes, but, <laughs> but I'm just saying you can pretty much, you know, but then once you get to Frank Dukes and whomever, what, what are you bringing to Frank Dukes? Somebody who is being inundated with a request to produce their material. What, what do you bring him, right? So it really just, I, and this is having, uh, again, not toot my own horn, but I have, you know, a like Grammy Award nominated, a track. I've worked with Benjamin Clementine, people who've won, you know, big Mercury Prize, a ton of Juno Award winners, Jazz Cartier, right? Cardinal official. I've worked with all of them, and I'm telling you, it comes back. <laughs> this is what this is facts. This is not even speculation or whatever, right? It's it's going to come back down to that, right? You're connected. You're networked. You're doing. I, I like Janelle's. You know, that's <laughs> some really, that's amazing. That's great ideas. I was just like, damn, yeah, that's cool. That's 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 how. But I it's going to come back down to that at the end of the day, right? I read every single email that's sent in that comes in my inbox, and I we get a lot. But right? yeah, so if the product so, isn't good, you that maybe that's why you're not getting a response or. Yeah. And I guess it doesn't hurt either to m maybe say, if you hate this, tell me, because that feedback is really important. Yeah, yeah. and also keep in mind, don't, like, don't get discouraged if the person that you reach out to isn't responding back. It just means that it might not be a fit, right? But eventually you'll find that right fit. So you don't put your hopes all in that person that you're reaching out to. Like, Be open to the entire process of you never know what's going to uh, end up happening. You never know who you're going to end up connecting with. Uh, so that's what I would say as well. Don't uh, always just think about this one person is who I want to work with because it's also about does this person want to work with you? Is like you know what I mean? Um, and it could be various various factors. Whether it's the music, whether they're really busy, like you don't know. So don't I would say don't take it to heart if you don't take it to heart if you don't get responded back to or you get a rejection. Just take it as okay. You know what? They they read it, they heard it. It wasn't a fit, but you will find eventually the right person to help you along the way. Uh, did you have a question? No doubt. What's up, all the streamers out there? Um, so talking about connecting with some of these agencies, or whether it's a venue, a booking agent, a PR guy. Um, you know, you hit them up the first time, you DM them. Okay, I'm sure they got a bunch of DMs. Maybe they didn't see it. Maybe they did. I'll call them. I left a message. You know, oh, they didn't see it that time. Maybe, you know, I might assume maybe they didn't see it. You're saying they might. But I guess my question is, is there too many different ways to approach them? Like, do, have you ever had someone be in your DMs, then your phone calls, then your emails, then your LinkedIn, then your MySpace, all of this, and you're like, I'm not, I don't even want to look at this guy no more. Like, is that a thing? The term we are thirsty, yeah. It's just and, and maybe you're not thir thirsty, meaning just reeking, reeking of desperation. You know, reeks of desperation. So that that is a thing, actually. Yeah, because it's it, it's just it's you know it, it's it's almost like respecting. You know, let's say you're you know you're dating. You know, like you're, you you meet someone and then you're just like constantly like you met them. You went to the bar like downtown Winnipeg. What's it, Portage? Like whatever. And it's just like and you're just kind of like constantly. It, it it has the I think the opposite effect. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, that that, that is a thing. I, I, this is me just you know from from Pierre's side. But yeah, some people they're just hitting me up on what and I'm just like I got your email. I think the reason why I said that we we are reading your emails and DMs is that. 
we, 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 we received it. You know what I mean? So if you keep like just all the channels, this is, we, we already read your email, you know, like they're all being read. Like in most seasoned, like they have, you know, an assistant. It just, that's what largely my assistant does, just like read emails and like, and then she'll, you know, filter out, okay, this is cool. This is something worth checking out. It's all being read is what I'm saying, right? For the most part, for the most part, you know, at some point in time, right? Yeah. So like, so I would say this. My whole strategy for anything is persistence without being annoying. If you can find that balance of not annoying people but being persistent, you're gold, right? As long as you g give, like, as long as you break down what you're reaching out to that person for, and if you're being persistent but not hitting them up every week, like, say, you hit someone up and you know you haven't heard back and they might have responded or whatever, and it's and it's been like six months, or it's been like three months, then you could reach out to them again. But at the same time, like I'm saying, don't put all your eggs in that basket, right? You have to be able to uh, think, uh, be open-minded to other possibilities. But yeah, like you can, someone can get annoying. I do get some people that reach out that are, uh, are, are getting annoying, uh, but what I what I end up trying to do is also just give them like honest feedback and say you know what this isn't a fit for me, um, and like you know I, I just I like my whole thing is as long as I respond and let you know honestly like why like like if it's if it's just you know it's not a fit for me because m my whole thing is I have to be really passionate about what I'm working on, and ev and music is subjective, right? So like for me if I've if I've already told you why and then you keep Coming back, then no. Uh, but as long as you're persistent without being annoying, that's that's a good thing. Persistence will always help you. Like persistence will always help you because you're actually shooting your shot. If you're not shooting your shot at at anything, then how are you going to actually get a shot, right? So it's a balancing act. But as long as you figure out what works for you you will eventually find the right team, the right people, the right collaborators, the right connections. Like, it's only a matter of time as long as you're being true to yourself, um, you're fully confident in what you're doing. Like, it's only a matter of time. Maybe, actually, that's a good thing for us to maybe continue to talk about is persistence, but not necessarily with individual people, but persistence in your actual career. Um, because I know that there are a lot of artists who are like, man, like I've made great music and I've been trying at this really hard for like three years. Um, how long have you been doing this, Jesus? I've been doing this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. More than three years, right? Yeah, definitely. And, and it's probably taken much longer than like three years for you to even get to the point that you kind of yeah, yeah, I mean, wanted to be. Yeah, w with the right focus and the right attitude, I think um, I came back like into the folds and it's been about three four years since i've really g like given it actually um a whole new energy and um th things have definitely man things have definitely popped off in a big way and so in some ways I haven't at all you know what i mean like um i recently um had a meeting with um with drex from ovio i was at the ovio count compound in uh, Toronto last year and um I sat down with Drax and showed him some of my videos and my music and he's like he was loving it but at you know at the end of the day I'm not OVO fit I'm not a fit for OVO you know what I mean and I I, I know that and at the time I was like you know really wishing maybe something will pop off here but um just for him to get to to look at it and say that's dope you should hold on to that you know um that that hit me big you know, I was like, okay, this this is the same guy in the OVO camp who Drake's killing it. No matter if you like Drake or not, he, he's killing it. So, like, for me, it was like a whole nother uh, energy that was kind of like just kind of came about. And um, that was from just shooting, you know. It was a missed shot, but damn, I feel like, you know, I got some more time on the court. You know, I feel more confidence behind my step, you know. So um, it's uh, it's about... Right back to what Dalton says, too, in being secure in your art and yourself, you know what I mean? And with music, I think, um, especially MCs, I think the ones who really, really stand through the test of time are the ones who, 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 who practice it daily, 
who are writing daily, challenging themselves to to um, perform better the next day, you know, consistently. And um, it's just a matter of believing in yourself, you know, and um, believing in your energy and your step and your music and your art and your craft. There's also no overnight success. That is it. Yeah, you touched on so. Yeah, this I like. Some people you'll see somebody just just magically appear and uh, they're on on all the playlists on Spotify and all that. The stories, which you know, I can't share because this is going to be archived. But holy cow, every rapper and producer that you all listen to, this is what I know for a fact. You you don't you 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 you're not didn't see the struggle. Like it's it's not an overnight success. These are some people who've been who are uh, you know languishing in relative obscurity for four or five years and then they got a break, you know what I mean? They got a placement, uh, credit, uh, feature, whatever, whatever, and then things take off. So every, there's not one, art, you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's, I, yeah, there's no act that I've worked with um, from the highest of the high to the, like, that there's a ton of struggle that none of you all, you just see the, the flashy, the, you know, the gloss, the flashy, but holy cow, like playing for like, you know, shows for free and like coming out of pocket pay to play scenarios you know which happens in some of the larger markets like pay to get on a bill versus you know rather than you getting paid through a booking agent or management but you're paying to perform like so i've seen and some acts that have blown you know what I mean? like that's what they were doing right so that's another thing i'd say right is as part of the struggle the journey you know appreciate that the journey the beautiful struggle because yeah there's not one client okay and you can whatever share my client list that has not super struggle like nothing broke like you know what I mean? like yeah yeah they've all gone through that like there's no, there's none of the, you know, like a silver spoon and then things took off after like a year or six months. Hell no. No, no. This is after paying dues, you know, like, yeah, again, paying to, this is ridiculous stuff. Yeah. Struggle, you know? Um, yeah. So like, I, I would say like, uh, no matter what area you're, uh, you're pursuing in the industry, you are always going to have to deal with being persistent because at the end of the day, there's going to be ups and downs like there's moments where you think, oh, this is going to be it, and then it falls apart, right? So my whole, th my whole thing um, with, uh, with being persistent in the industry is you have to remember that you are being tested. You're being tested to see if this is really what you want because it's only going to intensify once you're successful. The, the amount of stress, uh, you know, uh, knowing that literally you have a whole team of people that are eating based on you being that person. Like, you know, there's there's always going to be a level of uh, stress, ups and downs, no matter what level uh, you're at. Uh, and just keep in mind that right now at whatever stage you are, whether it's at the beginning or something, you might have had really great news, but then something just pulled back and it's not happening. This is all because at the end of the day, you have to have really, really thick skin, no matter what area you're in, you know, um, whether it's you being a manager, being a producer, being a writer, being, uh, you know, being an artist, being, you know, someone that's trying to make it in PR, like there's all these different aspects where you're, you have to understand that you're, you have to build a really thick skin. Um, so that's, that's definitely important. I would just say throughout your journey, the one thing that you should not do is change who you are as a person don't let um don't let any um so-called missed opportunities which i don't believe in i believe in whatever is meant to be yours will be yours um but don't um dwell on that being something that changes you right like you have to keep in mind that you are who you are and being who you are is the greatest thing you can be so each step that you're going through in your journey uh, maintain that and maintain the tr maintain being able to be open to opportunities because you never know like what opportunity is going to be at the next door so like uh, when you were telling that story about like you know OVO and sitting there and it wasn't you weren't necessarily fit for them but you were in that room and in that meeting right like my takeaway from that um, just hearing that story is that you know you're doing something that's resonating with people whether you're a fit for their roster or not is irrelevant to that because, you know, people are speaking about the impact that you have. Yeah. And when you get to, and when you got to the point where you're in a room with Drex, that is the um, confirmation uh, that you are someone that people do see as being part of the future. Mm. 
right? So like, there's little milestones along the way, like, cause like when when I when I work with artists, like when like if it's on the management level and all that stuff, like every creative person has doubts about things and sometimes can't even see the little wins that they've gotten. So you know, if you're if you're trying to be a manager and you got this really great meeting but nothing came out of it for you, right? You have to remember you still got the meeting which means more than likely if you made a great impression but it just but nothing happened from the meeting it doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen in the future with that same person years down the line it just means in this moment maybe they see the potential in you but at this moment they can't do anything for you yet but those people will circle back around it, you'll be surprised at how much people will circle back around because now they feel like you've proven that you really want it Right. So you have to think of the little wins. So maybe if you're a producer, you know, you you didn't land a placement, but you collaborated with a producer that landed a, a placement. That just means that you keep like that just means that you are one step closer to getting that placement because you're in the room with someone that's gotten a placement. It means that you have a collaborator that you can collaborate with and potentially that music can get placed. So like. You have to think. You have to keep in mind. There's a lot of patience as well, because sometimes um, if you're a writer or an artist, like keep in mind the biggest artists in the world, they could finish a project a year or two before it comes out, right? Now, like every artist wants to put their music out, whether you're a producer, you know, an artist, you know, if an artist potentially a major label artist has your has your record, or you know people have heard it but it hasn't gotten placed. You have to keep in mind the positive in that whole scenario is that people have heard your record. A&Rs have heard it, artists have heard it, producers have heard it, engineers have heard it, managers have heard it. Like, so, you know, eventually those people will come back to you because they heard something that they liked. So, there's, so you have to keep in mind that uh, when it comes to persistence, there are little milestones that you should always hold on to because it's, cause it's showing you that you're meant to do this. Like, instead of just looking at the big picture things that haven't happened yet, look at the little things that have happened, right? So whether it's, oh, I had a great meeting with a graphic designer and, you know, I'm going to get my artwork done the way I want it and whatever, right? You may not necessarily have gotten 100,000 streams on Spotify or on SoundCloud or wherever, but now you know that the visual representation of your art is taken care of, right? So I would just say think of the little wins. Um, because it's it's hard to think of the little wins, but I'm saying this because I've had to you know I've had to make sure that I show and 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 make artists understand those those things are important as well. Uh, because and the other thing is taking care of your your mental well being as well. Because you're going after something that people consider impossible all the time, right? So you have to take care of yourself, and the way that you can help take care of yourself is looking at the positive in every single situation, which is hard to do. But you will get there, and it's really beneficial um, to keeping keeping your spirit up um, and not necessarily making your creativity um, uh, dwindle through the process of building your career. I don't know if I said too much or whatever, but I'm just... It was all great. Oh. Can, can I add on to that? That was you awesome. You sure can, yeah. Um, one thing... I'm going through this right now, too. Um, I'm actually going through everything we're speaking about right now. But one thing that I noticed with um, this group called Snotty Knows Res Kids, that they're, they're my homeboys and they're, they're killing it now. Right now, they're, they're on their way up. Um, one thing that I realized within, the, I'm only speaking for the hip hop game right now, um, as opposed to like when I was coming up, there was so much competition, so much, oh, you're whack, I'm better than da 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 And so much like, um, I don't I don't know just like this weird like energy with a lot of haters and this and that but what I noticed with the snotty nose reds kids they were shortlisted for Polaris prize recently by the way um and they only been out like a year or two <laughs> one thing I noticed about them that kind of makes me feel like happy and very like uh, um excited for their future is that they celebrate they celebrate their small wins they celebrate themselves, you know. They celebrate when they write a dope line. They're like, oh, snap, you see that? And a lot of that I see is lost, you know. And, and a lot of that comes from hip-hop fund fundamentals. Like, if we take it back to, to the root, that's that's what it's about, you know, bringing each other up. And I think that's important, too, is is supporting fellow artists and um, 
because that always comes back in return. You know what I mean? As opposed to like, oh, that guy's whack. No, 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 no. You know, like, take a look at it because you, you, you'd you want them to take that second look too, right? So show love, get love. That's what I'm, that's what I'm learning today. Those are actually really great points. And I find this really interesting because this past weekend we did um, a country music workshop, which is totally the opposite of hip hop. But our workshop ended with the exact same sentiment about taking care of yourself, celebrating those small things. Um, and then and then I plugged this at that one as well. But um, I think it's really important for all artists to remember that because, you know, I consult musicians on a daily basis and I often tell people that I feel like I'm an artist therapist because everyone's just kind of like melting down and really sad about not being successful but what they're not doing is looking at those small successes like someone just paid 10 bucks to get into your show you know like that's pretty that's pretty cool um but anyway we are in a couple in two weeks we have um a health and wellness workshop on validation and managing your expectations so if anyone is feeling this and is like oh this is hitting really heavy um that's something that, that i think is really important to address and i just find that really interesting that in both you know, it doesn't matter, like, even what genre you're in. This is just such an important thing for people to remember because it is hard to be heard, and you could be working for years and years and years at this, and if you're forgetting about yourself, like, you're just going to end up being bitter and tired and, and hating yourself. So, but thank you so much for, for making those points. Um, we are coming to the end now. Um, so before I close this off... Um, we, the three of our speakers are going to be here um, doing some one-on-one -on -one meetings tomorrow. They're pretty much all full. There's a couple of spots left, so if anyone is interested, um, just come see me after the workshop, and um, we'll do our best. Um, there really isn't a lot of space, but there are a couple slots. Um, <coughs> sorry, I have, like, the worst cough, and I'm, I promise I'm not contagious. Um <laughs> Uh, we also, I have some surveys on the table just behind the chairs there. If you could fill those out, let us know how we did. Let me know if there's anything that you wish we would have talked about or um, workshops that you would like to see. Um, you can even write down ideas for, you know, future panelists. That would help me because I do a lot of research and it takes a lot of time. Um, so, yeah, if you could fill those out, that would be great. There's a little tray for you to put those in. Um, and then back there, th we also have these little, like, these little nerdy music works you know, bookmarks, um, but that has all of the upcoming workshops on there, including the one I was just letting you know about. Um, there's one that's not on there. It's not really a workshop, but I'm we're going to be getting together with Winnipeg Film Group um, in a couple of weeks to do um, a musician filmmaker meet and greet. So if you want any really cool videos and you don't know. Uh, it, you know, who can film that for you. This is a really good way to, uh, this is where Tommy, who's doing our streaming, I met him at one of these meet and greet things, um, but it'll be a chance for you to go and talk about your project and sort of the aesthetic you're looking for. Um, and also there's a lot of filmmakers who are looking to put music into their films. So that's happening a couple weeks. We have, we put all those in our workshop e-news or in our e-news. So make sure you open those Manitoba music emails. There's lots of important information. Um, and then other than that, uh, join us for snacks here at the end. Um, but I would really like to thank all of you for coming all this way and spending your time here with us. Um, it was really great to hear from you. And uh, thanks again for, for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.